All right. Uh, very good evening, everyone. All the students who are attending today's uh, MOOC live session, the first live session for our two courses, Bioengineering and Interactomics. Welcome to this session today. I'm Sanjeev Srivastava, your instructor for this course from Department of Biosciences and Bioengineering at IIT Bombay. Along with me, I have a set of TAs uh, who are all going to be actively uh, working with all of you over the next few weeks of this course. We thought it's a good idea for uh, you to know us that, you know, where we work, what we do, and also all of your TAs because they will be interacting with you quite routinely. So today we are going to uh, talk to you very informally. And also we want to uh, talk in the context of at least a recent, uh, you know, innovation which are happening in the omics technology in the context of pandemic COVID-19, right? So we just wanted to make sure that various technologies which you are going to study in bioengineering or in interactomics, many of those are quite relevant uh, even in the context of COVID-19 and in the current pandemic uh, which we have seen that how these technologies can be very powerful. So uh, this just overview slide, again, I, I'm not going to make today's session about another lecture. You are going to watch many lectures in the uh, MOOC course, as uh, you are already aware of. Each week you have five uh, videos to watch, and you are going to do assignment from that. But I'm just going, kind of giving you the context of today's uh, session, how we are going to uh, plan it out. Our idea is to give you some glimpse of the research processes involved in doing these kind of innovation, a laboratory view directly from the lab, and also like in the context, we'll talk about some basics of these technologies. Please uh, do keep asking questions in the chat as I get time in between where we will take your questions and discuss that as well. So COVID-19 is one of the uh, uh, you know recent in, uh, pandemic which all of you have seen. And this is actually a good way to talk that how the current innovations and technologies in the multi-omics can be so powerful. When we heard about you know the Wuhan uh, outbreak and the COVID-19, Immediately, there was, uh, you know, how to detect the uh, patients who are getting infected. So for something like, you know, as simple as that, you need detection of virus, you need to know the sequence of the virus, right? Otherwise, there are too many uh, viruses and various types of similar strains are there. How to uniquely identify the new Wuhan strain? So idea was to first look at their uh, genome sequence. And once you know that, you know, within this genome sequence, there are some set of genes which are very unique sequences. Can we now design the primers against those and come up with a simple test like the real time PCR based test, right? And then along with that, various type of uh, you know electron microscopy experiments were performed, mass spectrometry experiments were performed to understand the proteins and the structure of this particular viral proteins. And then we, we knew about the spike protein, nuclear protein replicases, and therefore many type of tests and various type of possibilities towards vaccine development initiated which got further characterized to look at the immune responses from microarrays, various type of therapeutic strategies came forward. And throughout we have seen like the need for bioinformatics and need for various type of, uh, you know, the computational power of analyzing the data, even tracking the viral strain moving to different parts in the same country and different parts of the world. All of that, you know, all of you have witnessed that, in, uh, you know, uh, the entire textbook has almost opened up in front of you. So it's very relevant to, to recap that how these technologies have been very powerful at the time it was required. Of course, the virus has been much more powerful than these technologies and keep changing its uh, you know, strain and new variants are keep coming in and we see second wave and third wave from Delta to Omicron. But nevertheless, I think you must say that you know, human intelligence and the technologies have really tried to at least make a good balance of this fight right, and this war. So uh, with this context, today we are going to give you some glimpses and illustration of some of these technologies. Of course, your courses are going to give you a lot more fundamentals, but we are going to give you at least the uh, overview of these uh, technologies today. But before we move forward and, and take you to the lab and do some of these experiments, uh, let me start by introducing you to some uh, TAs who are actually uh, very well qualified PhD students from IIT Bombay and some are from IIT Madras. Uh, who are going to be with you in the course and i'm going to uh, introduce you uh, introduce to them uh, one by one so that you are aware that you know to whom you're going to talk in the next couple couple of weeks time 
So let me just uh, stop sharing my video and I'll introduce you to subsequently in the uh, follow up sessions with the different TAs. Hi all, my name is Shalini and I'm a PhD scholar at IIT Bombay under Professor Sanjeeva's guidance. My work revolves around the understanding of pathogenesis in, in Plasmodium vivax of Indian population. So my work is majorly divided into two parts. One is to understand the disease where we take the whole blood sample and we try to understand the multiple omic studies that is metabolome, proteome, and uh, transcriptome of the plasma samples and the parasite. Then we try to utilize integrated omics to compile these studies together to understand how the disease is progressing. The second part of my work also involves the comprehensive search or exploration of the biomarker candidates for di diagnosis and prognosis. For diagnostics, we have taken the parasite proteins where we have tried to express and uh, do the immunoassays uh, to prepare a multiplex kit where we can diagnose the parasite using the parasite proteins and prognose the disease by using the host system in the clinical settings. So once that goes in the clinical setting, it will have more di accurate diagnosis and that can be further used for understanding the disease progression better. So uh, this is about my work and uh, I have an inclination towards this course because I feel that uh, as we move on, we forget to see the basic things in a different with a different perspective. And with this course helps me connect to the people who are starting in this field in from the very beginning. That gives me a whole different perspective. This fascinates me and helps me to understand or to look at a particular thing with different perspectives. So I look forward to interact with you all more and to learn with you. So welcome, guys. All right. Thank you, Shalini. Now let's move on to next TA, which is uh, Amrita. Hello, everyone. My name is Amrita Mukherjee, and I'm a PhD student at IIT Bombay, currently working with Professor Sanjeev Srivastava. My work focuses on uh, understanding the biomolecular signatures of cervical cancer. It's a small part of cancer moonshot program as well. So I perform proteomics and genomics from human cervical uh, tissue, both cancer and tumor, and also on different cell line models as well. So for the same purpose, I'm also involved in developing a drug resistant cell line models of cervical cancer. Um, by the way, I'm currently the TA of the bioengineering course. So this is the third time I'm being a part of this MOOC course. So previously I was involved with the same course twice. So one of the reasons to be in the MOOC course as a TA is that I'm um, very much fond of interacting with students and love to share and discuss ideas. And as you all know, MOOC is a huge platform that brings together various types of participants, which are uh, the blooming minds from the every corner of this country. So it is a great opportunity to explore the connectivity as a teaching assistant here. So in this course, I'll be helping you with the contents of week uh, one, six, seven, and eight, which includes um, the basic biology for engineers, uh, cell cycle dysregulation and cancer, proteins and proteomics, as well as um, bioinformatics. So I'm very much uh, looking forward to interact with all of you. Have a great day. Thank you, Amrita. And uh, we are also introducing this time uh, a new scheme in which uh, the Prime Minister Research Fellowship recipients, uh, now Lavanya is going to talk about her work from IT Madras, is going to give you a help session towards your assignments, right? So let me introduce uh, Lavanya now. Hello, everybody. I am Lavanya and I'm a PhD scholar in Protein Biophysics Laboratory working under the guidance of Dr. Adi Narayanan at IIT Madras. My work focuses on the study of antibiotic binding proteins. Specifically, we are interested in mirror family of proteins. So these proteins bind and capture antibiotics and prevent them from acting on the bacterial cells. Therefore, mirror family of proteins help bacteria to gain drug resistance. So the gene encoding for this protein is cloned into a plasmid vector, which is then transformed into E. coli cells. The cells are cultured and the protein is then purified through 
a series of steps in chromatography and the purity is checked through SDS page, polyacrylamide gel electrophoresis. The purified protein is then characterized through various techniques such as circular dichroism to see the secondary structure motors and other techniques such as differential scanning calorimetry, intrinsic titration calorimetry, SACS, NMR and intrinsic fluorescence. So through these characterization techniques, the structure and folding of the protein is understood better. And we hope to have some applications through these in the field of medicine in generating new and effective drugs that will not bind to the antibiotic binding proteins. So this will help us un get a better understanding of folding and binding mechanisms in multidrug resistant systems. So I'm one of the TAs for the course Bioengineering and Interface with Biology and Medicine. So this is a beautiful course that connects the science in biology with cutting edge technology in the field of medicine. So this is my first MOOC course as a TA. So I'm equally excited in being a part of this learning experience. In this course, I'll be helping you solve the assignment questions by giving you some practice questions and we'll be solving it together in live sessions that I'll be conducting every Friday evening, 6 to 7 p.m. I will also help you clear any doubt that you have during the course. Thank you, Lavanya. And next, let me introduce you to Ankit now. He's another PM. My name is Ankit Founder and I am a PhD scholar at IIT Bombay working under Professor Sanjeeva. My work is based on meningioma tumors. Meningioma are a kind of prominent brain tumors, but they remain mostly benign in nature. But only a fraction of the, of the patients generate aggressive or deadly kind of tumors. So my work focuses on identifying the biomarkers that can be easily help in early onset of detection and also to develop mass spectrometry based immunoassays so that the patients can be assessed easily using body fluids such as serum. Also, I am looking on different biophysical characteristics that helps will be helping in stratifying the grade wise classification of the patients so that we can get an idea of which patients are developing the aggressiveness and can try to prevent them. Then we'll perform an integrated uh, omics analysis to identify the altered and the most perturbed pathways that are involved in meningioma of progression. Finally, I would like to identify one drug candidate and perform drug repurposing-based approaches using both in silico as well as cell line-based assets. I am doing TSC for the MOOC course for the first time. I will be they are conducting a hands-on bioinformatics session every uh, weekly uh, for to give you all a glimpse of an I uh, to get an idea of the all the data that is generated through different technologies that you will learn in both the bioengineering and the interactive courses how to analyze and interpret those data. So I took up this TSC uh, for this conducting this session to interact with you all intellectually as well as to learn from you all. So it will be an interactive uh, session and a hands-on session that will uh, so and uh, so uh, hope to interact with you all soon. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Ankit. And now let's move to uh, uh, TAs of Interactomics course and let me introduce you to Arvya Banerjee. Hi all, welcome to this Interactomics course. My name is Orgho Vanishi and I am a PhD under the mentorship of Professor Sanjeeva Sivastava. My work basically focuses on the pituitary adenomas. I am the TA for the Interactomics course. I have around five years of teaching. The reason for being a MOOC TA, I like to interact, having intellectual interactions between the participants and also to educate, self-educate myself. In course, I will be helping you with the protein uh, microarrays uh, section, how the protein microarrays help in the diagnosis, how they are fabricated, and what is their use. And I'm very positively looking to interact with you all. Uh, so welcome to this pituitary research, and I am performing this research under Professor Sanjeeva Srivastava.
So first of all, our aim was to build the uh, detailed uh, proteo map, so like the blueprint or the landscape or the anterior and the posterior lobe, because uh, till today there is no proteo available for the anterior and the posterior proteome. So we have performed the deep mass spectrometric experiments to decode the proteomics of the both anterior and the posterior lobe. Where in this pituitary protein map, we looked at the missing proteins, the dark protein, the UP proteins, the UP proteins, and the proteins that shared uh, biological functions and uh, which help in the locomotion. Second is the we are studying the Cushing disease, the Cushing disease and uh, Cushing acromegaly and NFP are the kinds of the pituitary adenomas. In the Cushing disease, we compared the Cushing disease uh, with the uh, normal controls and we uh, wanted to study how these tumors differentiate from the and the process of human locomotion. In the acromegaly, acromegaly is also one of the rare control where you will find the gigantism, atrophy, large speed, cardiomyopathy, hypertension, this kind of comorbidities. In the acromegaly, we also compared those with the normal controls and we wanted to differentiate uh, how the proteins behave differently in case of the acromegaly. Lastly, the NFPA, uh, sorry, lastly, the NFPA, no. NFPA so the we wanted to see like how these non-functioning non pituitary adenomas are uh, different from the normal controls and how we can differentiate those. Uh, yeah, moving to the grade-wise classification, the pituitary adenomas can also be classified on the basis of the grade by the position in the cavernous sinus and in the cellar tunica. So it can be defined, uh, so it can be designated as the grade one, grade two, and the grade three, depending upon their size. And uh, basically what we did there, what we did there, we compared the different grades with the normal control and performed the proteomics to know how different grades can be correlated with the protein markers and protein related to its biological functions and human locomotion. Lastly, we also studied uh, the metabolomic profiling where we uh, detected the autoantibodies, like which are the autoantibodies which can be diagnosed at a very early stage using the serum sample. And also we performed the FTR and metabolomics of the serum samples of the pituitary to encode the metabolome change that was very much responsible uh, for the project. So this is my project introduction, like uh, what I am working on. Uh, very happy to, to I will very happy to take questions. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Argyu. Now let's uh, have the second TA for interactomics course, Abhilash. Hi all. I'm Abhilash. I'm a PhD student in proteomics lab, IIT Bombay. I'm working under Professor Sanjeeva Srivastava, and my work focuses on colorectal cancer proteomics for identification of biomarker that can detect the cancer at a very early onset. We focuses on different uh, multi-omic data for the discovery of biomarkers. After the discovery, we also try to take the <clears throat> biomarker for validation using molecular and cellular proteomics approaches. This will tell the role of the marker in the prognosis and diagnosis of the cancer as well as other in-depth biology. Uh, after inhibition of the marker, if it is up, if it is upregulated, what happens to the systemic effect? So this work we do using molecular uh, cell culture approaches that will tell the role of the protein marker in pathogenesis, development, or metastasis of the cancer. Thank you, Vilash. Let's now move on to last TA, uh, Avinash. Hi all, my name is Avinav Singh and I am a PhD scholar at IIT Bombay working under the guidance of Professor Sanjeeva Srivastava. My research work basically focuses on the multi-omics preparation of oral cancer. So oral cancer is one of the common types of cancer in India. So in this study, I am dealing with the um, proteomics, genomics, transcriptomics and metabolomics study of oral cancer tissue, uh, saliva and serum. And after that, try to find a potential biomarker and different uh, therapeutic target for the oral cancer. Uh, I am a, a TA of uh, the inter interactomics course, and I have a, a one year of a TA assistant uh, experience in uh, IT additional courses at IIT Bombay. And uh, the reason to be in a MOOC course, uh, MOOC course TA is to have an intellectual interacting interaction of the, all the participants, participants coming from the different part of uh, India and different backgrounds. 
So in this course, I will be helping with you uh, BLI and SDR uh, oh, and uh, the role of uh, application of this uh, instrument. So, uh, so thank you. I'm looking forward to have a positive impact with you all. All right. Well, uh, so we have seen like, you know, we have several uh, who are going to help you to uh, be part of uh, this particular course. Uh, I'm just going to take you to the lab. But before that, uh, can I request all the uh, TAs to just mute themselves? A uh, lot of backgrounds are coming. Class and others. <laughs> All right, I hope that's better now. So uh, this year we are just, you know, on the experimental basis, we are trying to add two more activities for our MOOC course. We always want to make it more and more interactive. So this year we are going to have uh, Lavanya with you every Friday, especially for the bioengineering course, right? And she's going to uh, solve the bioengineering assignments of previous year to give you some idea. And then she can take some query for the current year questions as well. But of course, she's not going to help you solve your own assignment. You have to do that. Uh, additionally, Ankit is going to do the bioinformatics session, which will be uh, a kind of you know optional activity for you to learn more. We do see that you know the way data analysis has uh, become very powerful and very important. It's a good idea for you to be aware of the basic tool for bioinformatics, and also like you know in terms of how to go uh, take your knowledge forward by doing something available from the internet tools. So it's not going to be for your exam, but essentially towards your own learning, both for bioengineering and interactomics course, we are going to share the uh, Google form so that you can take the slot and every week uh, we will have this session to give you more uh, hands-on activity about doing certain type of analysis. Sometimes it will be basic bioinformatics and sometimes it may go towards some genomics and proteomics and various type of advanced data analysis as well, right? So these will be some new addition to our uh, ongoing activity. So you have seen for both the courses, uh, for the bioengineering and interactomics, we have a very well prepared team and who is, uh, you know, quite uh, already, uh, uh, you know, experienced in this area. These are all very uh, good PhD students from different, uh, you know, courses at IIT Bombay, and they will be with you to solve your queries and problems. So I think you should make this as an opportunity to interact more with us uh, and don't lose that opportunity. Uh, just being it is an online course, we do not want you to feel that we are only online. We are definitely available to you like a classroom. And, uh, you know, just make sure that you are taking that first step forward to interact more with us, right? All right. So in this direction, let me just now uh, not talk because it looks like, you know, we're just talking. Let me take you to the video. I just, just took my lab coat and I'm just going to move to the lab to show you where we work, right? Just briefly. And of course, as we go along in the subsequent live sessions, you will have more interaction on different technologies. So uh, I'll just kind of, you know, uh, walk around. So this is our proteomics lab uh, at IIT Bombay. Various type of uh, instruments and, uh, you know, molecular biology tools, which you learned in the courses are all available. It's starting from something as basic as PCR, which will be explained to you shortly. Towards uh, various type of even high throughput approaches uh, including the technology like protein microarray, which something you can see it here. Uh, and of course, you need to see a lot of, uh, you know, the biological samples, how they are being stored, how they are uh, utilized, a lot of, uh, you know, temperature control systems and treatments are required for that activity. We also have various type of sample preparation workstations, which is very much required for doing your sample prep, especially if you are looking at, you know, thousands of genes and proteins. You need much more uh, sophisticated, uh, you know, uh, these kind of instruments and technologies. Uh, one instrument that you see here is FTIR. So that is uh, another instrument which will be talked shortly. Uh, but I'm just uh, moving around to give you the glimpse. Of course, uh, more and more of these things will be explained to you shortly. Uh, we specialize mainly in the technology known as proteomics, uh, which is a bunch of technology to study the proteins in more high throughput manner. So my lab has more specialization in this particular area. And here you see a lot of uh, very high advanced gadgets which are available. So let me just stop sharing and see if 
probably you can get a bigger view of uh, the lab. So uh, this field of proteomics, you know, has really advanced further to genomics. And now goal is to look at all the proteins, how they interact, where they're localized, how they function, can we understand their modification? So various type of properties, very challenging to study for protein. And studying at the scale of thousands, it really makes it difficult because if some of you would have done a short project or some internship somewhere to look at one protein structure or to purify one protein and to look at protein purification, you must have encountered a lot of challenges, right? So studying thousands seems very challenging. But these are some of you know, the very uh, state-of-the-art technologies like mass spectrometers, which has made it much easier for us to understand and uh, study these fields. So we will be talking about these type of instruments. What we see here is the liquid chromatography to separate the peptides and then the mass spectrometers, which can separate these ionized peptides based on the mass and charge ratio. And you can then look at the databases to analyze that data set. Another type of instrument, another mass spectrometer could be utilized for metabolomics analysis, looking at the small molecule and drugs and metabolites in our given sample. Or instrument like what you see in my back is known as a triple quadruple mass spec, can be utilized to look at a specific targets, a specific metabolite or a specific type of peptides, which could be analyzed. Of course, we will be talking about NGS, which is very important next generation sequencer instrument, which is uh, has given so much idea uh, during the pandemic time, right? And if you want to study some of the interaction in the high throughput manner, how a protein is binding to the drugs. If you want to test out, you know, for the spike protein and it's going to bind to which drugs, you need more technology. And therefore, techniques like uh, bioliar interferometry based platform octet, what we have, or uh, surface carbon resonance via core instruments, some of these technologies can be used. So I'm sure you now feel excited that we are going to talk about many uh, recent uh, technologies which is available uh, for us to introduce to you, which you will be talking and uh, discussing in this course in, in at great length. But uh, we have pretty much all of these uh, gadgets and these instruments in our lab, and we are going to talk more and more about them as we go along. So give me a second to just you know take off my lab coat, and I'll be with you to conduct the session now. All right, so uh, I've not seen any query uh, probably, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm, I'm missing, but uh, uh, let me welcome all of you once more, those who are joining a little late, and let me just name some of you. So Pooja, Supriya, Anisha, Sayan, Noshad, Manoj, Gharshita, Mumtaj. Uh, hello everyone, I think all of you have been posting some messages on the chat. So hello and welcome to this particular session. We are. Uh, available to talk to you uh, in today's live session. Uh, what we have planned that we are going to give you some story and the glimpse of technologies in the context of COVID-19, right? Which is uh, an invisible enemy in front of all of us. It still keeps surprising us with various type of challenges. And during this type of, uh, you know, the course of pandemic, uh, we also did a lot of research and we are just trying to show you in the context of some of these instruments and technologies, how it can be, uh, you know, used to uh, you know, advance our knowledge, right? So towards this slide, we started uh, thinking about can there are many detection tests available, uh, but also uh, those detection tests, which is conventional like real-time PCR, requires the uh, RNA from the virus to be amplified uh, with the cDNA to be converted, and that has to be amplified with the real-time PCR. And that's where, and you are looking at a specific primers, and that's where you see a lot of misdiagnosis also happening. So idea was, can we look at directly the peptides of these viruses, which is given that a spike protein is quite in abundance. Uh, so where the nucleoprotein and the replicases, can we look at directly the peptides and proteins from the virus rather than amplifying the RNA and converting those to cDNA? So uh, that was one question we wanted to address. And second was, can we look at how a human uh, changes in response, host response because of viral infection, as the disease get progressed from the mild to the severe form? that is known as prognostic marker, right? And in this case, we have various collaborators, various clinicians from different hospitals, Dr. Jayanti Shastri, 
from Kasturba Hospital, Dr. Sachi, Dr. Om Shrivastava from the Slok Hospital, Professor Sanjeev Sabnes, Maths uh, Statistics uh, Department, IT Bombay, Professor uh, Michelle Hill from Australia, QMR. Many collaborators and clinicians were involved in uh, helping us doing this very challenging project forward. And some glimpses gives you an idea that how difficult it was to do this kind of research, especially in the first uh, wave of the COVID-19 pandemic, when it was very challenging to even think about you know, handling the COVID samples. So uh, what we thought, can we take the patient's nasopharyngeal swab, which is already uh, being tested for the real-time PCR test, and from that swab sample, can we get the peptides out uh, by doing different type of extraction methods, use the mass spectrometry to look at which peptides we can detect, and we could see many peptides on the virus we were able to find out. And then can we specifically detect those viral peptides using a triple quadrupole mass spectrometry based method, which Avinash is going to talk to you in subsequent session. And then based on those, they were able to segregate negative and positive, and as well as some patients who were recovered, but is still showing the trace response of the viruses. So this was one of the things which we thought to develop. And further, uh, so this work uh, actually uh, was one of its uh, you know uh, novel contribution, which was also we got invitation from Nature to, to give a talk globally to tell about these technologies what we are developing. Additionally, we thought, uh, can we look at uh, uh, patient prognosis, how the patient is moving from the uh, mild form to the severe form. And if you imagine, everybody who gets COVID, uh, you know, becomes apprehensive, like, am I just going to recover? Or am I going to get deteriorated? Whether I'm going to need the ICU, or I'm going to just, you know, be fine in like any other viral infection, right? So that's always that uh, uh, challenge is there. And therefore, can we find the cues or the mechanism or some sort of indication in the body which tells us, okay, there are a set of protein which is now deteriorating or they are changing, which is giving us some clue that patient is now going to go, uh, you know, deteriorate. Whereas if it is not changing, it may indicate the patient is going to get stable and getting recovered fast. So there are some tests which you might have heard. People are, doctors were also looking at some of these type of tests like D-dimer tests and looking at IL-6 level, ferritin, some of these proteins, you might have heard the names, which were actually indirectly way of, uh, helping clinician to find out uh, whether they should take the patient for enrollment or they should be you know, just doing it fine and th they should release. Uh, but what we did, we look at very systematically almost 200 patients blood sample using these type of uh, technologies from both mass spectrometry as well as FTIR. And then what you see here, a kind of a test, I'm not going to talk in, in great detail here, but it shows that from the non-severe to the severe form, set of proteins are very different, like angiotensinogen, epilipo B protein, serpent protein, fibrogen gamma chain protein. So some of these proteins, like a set of protein, when they are showing indication that they are very different and their levels are very high in the patient, that could be indicative that patient is might getting severe and prone to severity. So that's where I think this technology and test was quite prominent. And we got patent and a lot of uh, lead from this particular work which was also highlighted in the cover page of the general proteome research publication. Further, we thought since there is a lot of change happening in the plasma sample, can we come up with a quicker test and quicker, quick way of detecting those signals? While mass spec is very authentic to give you the exact sequence, exact protein, but can we use other technologies which could be at least indicative but very quickly at the point of care devices? And that's where we use this type of carry uh, instrument for the FTIR which was from Agilent Technologies and became very powerful for us to find some very unique signatures, which is indicative from the differences of non-severe and severe group of patients. Again, Argu is going to talk about this. This work again got uh, covered in the uh, ACS journal and a lot of media highlights. So uh, with this, I think, you know, you got some glimpse that the technologies which you're going to study in this course are very relevant and they're as relevant that they could be utilized at the time when we need them, right? And therefore, it's really important for you to start knowing the fundamentals and seeing the broader perspective where it can be used. So we are going to now give you some live demonstrations from the lab, one by one for different uh, techniques. And uh, you know, broadly, of course, the time is going to get short to give you a very detailed presentation for each one of these. But I'll request uh, TS to just quickly give you the glimpse of those instruments and uh, their principle. And as we go along, then, of course, we will talk more to you about each one of those in detail, right? So uh, let me uh, uh, invite Amrita now to talk to you about uh, how PCR can be used and real-time PCR can be used for uh, broadly for any disease for that matter, and especially for COVID-19. Hello, sir. Thank you. Thank you for uh, uh, 
good uh, good evening everyone so i'm going to talk about the uh, pcr or polymerase chain reaction and uh, the modification of pcr that is uh, that has been really helpful in this covid scenario so as you know uh, the pcr or polymerase chain reaction so it is uh, a simple uh, it's not as simple but it converts um, very small amount of dna into it amplifies very small amount of dna into um, high uh, very large numbers of billions of strands of uh, dna or target uh, dna template in very uh, small time so uh, so basically the amplification reaction is composed of uh, three uh, steps um, step 1 2 and 3 as mentioned in the slide so the first step is denaturing so that uh, Uh, so uh, before before uh, going to the step i would like to uh, know that we need a uh, different um, starting materials we need the uh, template dna so the template dna you are going to amplify then we need uh, some primers the primers are forward primer and the um, reverse primer so these primers actually decide uh, up to which a uh, section you are going to amplify uh, in in your uh, template dna and then we require uh, a special type of dna polymerase en enzyme as well so this dna polymerase enzyme is not uh, the normal dna polymerase enzyme it's a um, uh, enzyme that works at a very higher temperature uh, so it is isolated from the tac for um, thermal support it is uh, organism so it's called a tac dna polymerase so um, so the step one is denaturing where the uh, two strands of dna at the higher temperature like 95 degrees centigrade they separate and then uh, the then comes the annealing step where the, at around 55 degree to 60 degree celsius uh, of temperature the both of the primers bind to the uh, both of the strands of the dna and then at around 72 degree celsius you um, allow the uh, all both the primers to synthesize the dna now these three steps uh, are repeated multiple times to um, amplify the entire reaction and at the end you will get um, a, a billions of strands of your target uh, dna um, from the um, very small starting material now how this uh, PCR technicians has been useful in covid-19 research so uh, uh, a small Mata, modification you... of this Could you please sure. turn on the video and also keep showing the instrument briefly? You know, at least thermal cycler and sure, sure. then continue. Yeah. Uh, sure, sir. Sure. So, uh, sir, if you can highlight me, uh, so I'll be able to. Just... Right. Yeah. Please continue. Yeah. So let me know the machine is visible or not. It is Amrita, but you know PPT is actually come on the full screen, so we cannot highlight on the full screen. You have to continue. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, right. It is visible. So this is the uh, machine we have. This is the instrument. Uh, we call it a thermal cycler. Uh, we can run the PCR uh, experiment in this um, instrument. So this is the lid of the in instrument. You can open the lid and you can place a uh, your um, reaction mixtures here uh, now after placing the reaction mixtures you need to set the um, you need to set the parameters so uh, this is the pop up window where you uh, basically set the parameters uh, for running the experiment so uh, i'll start with by clicking with the new protocol if you can see so if i start with the new protocol so a window will appear where we you will get to uh, choose a lot of options from there so starting with the very first lane the very first lane is a section where we allow uh, the samples to preheat so we have um, already told that the uh, pcr is uh, composed of three cycles one is an um, uh, separation of strands so before separation of strands we uh, preheat the samples at 95 degrees celsius here you can um, actually set the timing for the preheating we have uh, for now we have set it for uh, 3 uh, minutes you can uh, change it accordingly uh, then the step is a uh, hello uh, okay so the next step is uh, the denaturation step the denaturation is uh, always performed at uh, at around a very higher temperature here it is set as 95 degrees celsius um, you can you can um, set the timing accordingly uh, after denaturation 
the the next come is next is the annealing so annealing we have set here at the 55 degree centigrade this annealing depends uh, annealing temperature depends on the on the melting temperature of uh, the primers you are using yeah sorry to interrupt I think, but i think you know looks like uh, we are getting late now so what it looks uh, it is uh, i'm sure everybody got to feel that the same principle which you showed those settings has to be made on the instrument you can just simply open once more the uh, lid of the thermal cycler i have highlighted now so here as the students can see like in the 96 well played format you can actually do a lot of reactions of amplification of dna simultaneously right uh, so once you have prepared your sample you can also optimize multiple conditions for different type of primer and uh, even you know different temperature controlled uh, uh, sensors could be there when you can optimize multiple condition or you can do many sample at the same time so all of this is very high throughput and now Amrita will just uh, re recap quickly what all of you already know about how the uh, real-time PCR has been used for testing the uh, SARS-CoV-2, right? So Amrita just uh, walk them through this slide now. Right. Uh, so uh, in case of real-time PCR for uh, detecting the SARS-CoV-2, what we first do is that uh, the swab samples are collected from the suspected patients. After collecting the samples, the samples are first inactivated either by heat inactivation or by chemical inactivation. And from there, the RNA of the virus is extracted. Now, uh, we know that the PCR reaction happens with static material of DNA, but in the modification of this such uh, PCR, so the viral RNA is first converted to a complementary DNA uh, with the help of a special type of enzyme, which is reverse transcriptase enzyme. And then this complementary DNA is getting amplified um, to uh, finally produce the number of, uh, with the help of the SARS-CoV-2 specific primers to finally uh, get the um, ultimate numbers of uh, amplified DNA. So uh, yeah, here in this slide, you can, uh, you can uh, see the, uh, uh, mechanism of uh, the principle of reverse uh, reverse transcriptase PCR. So viral DNA is there, and from there you uh, extract the RNA, and the entire process uh, is is being performed. So uh, so that's it. Okay. Right. So uh, yeah, I think uh, thanks, Amrita. So again, students, you can appreciate that something as simple as PCR and real time PCR, which is pretty much available in all the standard molecular biology labs. Uh, became so powerful and uh, you know useful to detect this particular uh, uh, virus SARS-CoV-2 at the time when we really needed that, right? And that's where I think these technologies have made their impact so much. Uh, but how these sequences, we knew about them, but that actually comes with the next generation sequencer. And NGS uh, became very powerful because initially we have no idea that what this strain is infecting us. So how to develop the test, right? So now I request Ayushi to just you know show you our NGS setup and then she can briefly talk about that. Yes, sir. Okay. So I'll start the video. So hello, everyone. We have uh, in our lab, we have Iron Torrent S5 Studio, which is a sequencer here. And it comes with other small instrument which helps us in the library preparation. So this instrument basically is very good for the primer based targeted sequencing where you you uh, you have the primers of the sequence that you want that you want to amplify and then further sequence. So first step, so there are three steps in the uh, sequencing reaction. So the first step is the library preparation where you add the uh, primers and the reaction mixture for the uh, library preparation and then you uh, add the adapters and barcodes so that you have the library prepared and the second step is the template preparation and amplification so this instrument is called iron one touch this particular instrument is works on the amplification of uh, li the library that you have prepared so here you this is the uh, adapter where you fill the reaction mixture and this will help in the clonal amplification of the library and here we place the two recovery tubes where after the clonal amplification you get your amplified library in the in the recovery tubes here and once you are you have your template positive uh, library you, uh, you can then uh, go ahead with the sequencing reaction so for that uh, uh, so the instrument has this chip so here you can see in the one of the uh, oval structure we actually load the sample so this chip has multiple small small wells 
each well has the uh, sensor attached to it. And when you load the sample, so you must be familiar with the, uh, when the phosphodiester bond form during the DNA uh, uh, formation, there's a release of proton ion. So this actually the well, uh, which is uh, where you load the sample. So, uh, so this well has the pH sensor attached. So whenever there's a release of proton ion, this, uh, this pH sensor will actually detect the proton ion and give the instrument the signal that the uh, sequencing is happening. And here, this chip will actually go here in this instrument like this. And then you can, uh, yeah, you can just place, uh, close the chip clamp and you can fit the, uh, this is basically the cartridges which supply the four nucleotides. You can place the cartridge here like this. And this is just the washing solution and the cleaning solution. You have to close the uh, sequencer and then you can start the sequencing reaction. Right. And Great. now coming back Ashish, to the... Yeah. yeah. So uh, there are many principles, right? As uh, Aishi, you are just mentioning one of them with the ion torrent technology, looking at hydrogen ion detection. Uh, but there are many uh, principles in what different type of next generation sequence sets are available. We are not just emphasizing about one technology. We are just giving you the glimpse, all the students are just a glimpse of one type of NGS technology. That's how sequencing could be performed. So therefore, we will not spend a whole lot of time. But what you can see, theoretical concept that is shown on the slide, how practically is very easy to do that actually in, inside the lab. And with these kind of uh, instrument and technologies, uh, the time when we really needed that, we quickly got uh, the genome sequences of this. When then after that, with the basic bioinformatics sequence alignment, it was found it is not forming very, uh, you know, it is coming to the coronavirus family, but it's still it is a novel uh, variant, novel strain. And therefore, then it was named the COVID-19, right? So uh, different steps involved in doing the NGS. I'm sure in the theoretical lectures, you will learn more about it. Uh, Aishi, I think given the short time, what we have available, probably we'll skip this slide now. Uh, but uh, students have at least got the uh, glimpse of the instrument, which is uh, quite advanced instrument, but it is very simple to perform these experiments. Concepts are very important and novel, which is what all of you have to pick up at the basic level. So once we got these uh, NGS uh, instrument and real-time PCR to do the detection, of course, then many type of, uh, you know, whole world started reporting about the COVID-19. Everywhere is spreading and, you know, all kinds of international flights got banned and everything what you have seen in front of you were a result of these technologies, right? But then idea came that can we look into some other type of ways of quick detection, various type of antigen tests, antibody tests, immunogenic various type of assays. All that started coming up because the, the problem was spreading so far rapidly, the whole virus everywhere, that it was very difficult to rely only on one technology. So therefore, there was need to look into multiple other alternative platform. And now Argy is going to talk about spectroscopy-based applications for COVID-19. All right, argue. Uh, over to you. Please unmute and start. Yeah, okay. Am I visible? So, hello, everyone. So, uh, I am Orgo. I will be showing you the FTR instrument. So, what instrument you are seeing? This one. So, what the instrument you are seeing is the FTR instrument, the cutting edge technology. It is very small in size. You just paste, uh, you just take one microliter of the sample and you put it into the diamond slit, what you are seeing here. And the infrared, yeah. and the infrared uh, can be easily visible, like the infrared uh, uh, means there is a mirror and the infrared uh, spectrum is recorded. Now what happens, you can directly take a minimal amount of serum samples directly. Now the serum samples will be containing the metabolites these metabolites will show vibration and that vibration on the upon the FTR will be recorded here. So here you can see the peaks, what are the formation and through these peaks, we have to decode like which is COVID positive, which is COVID uh, negative. And in COVID positive also, you can decode like which is severe and which is non-severe with the help of ML based application. So this kind of vibrational spectra is good enough to distinguish the metabolites and characterize as per their severity. Back to you, Professor. Very good, Argyo. So I think uh, this work uh, which Argyo and team did was uh, published in analytical chemistry and got uh, quite a bit highlights and uh, became a very 
easy way of uh, detection of severity in the COVID-19 patients. So moving forward, I think another mass spectrometry based technology, which you will be also studying quite a bit in this course, uh, a new advancement uh, based on the mass spectrometers are known as targeted proteomics. And that's where different type of clinical assays being developed, which is like a substitute of ELISA, right? Like the way in the clinics ELISA happens with antibody based testing without having availability of antibody, could we still do the uh, test? And that's where I think, uh, you know, idea was to look into targeted proteomics based assays. So Avinash is going to uh, show you the triple quad mass spectrometer and how these assay could be developed to de specifically detect the uh, viral detection as well as prognosis of the patients. So, uh, hello, friends. So, this is, this is the CSQ quality instrument and this is the SPLC. So, this instrument is basically, Avinash, uh, it can show it. I cannot uh, see that. Yeah, now now we can see that. Please continue. Let's turn on. Please go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So uh, as you can see that this is a TSQ uh, TSQ Altis uh, mass instrument. So this have a basically mass analyzer triple quadrupole, which can be used as a different kind of study like a pharmacological studies and the clinical research as well in the uh, forensic toxicology to uh, for the doping test as well so it can detect a very st uh, small amount of uh, very, small, very small molecules as well as the peptide uh, by study so this is a it is connected to the uh, uhplc so this is the hplc basically where we keep our samples so here you can see that so here we keep our samples and after that this samples is the, the passes through the um, by column to the instrument and where we uh, it, uh, the, this is the ion 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 source where the ionization of the molecules or peptides happens. After that, we detect the different type of targeted peptides. So, as you in slide and also in the screen, you can see that. So, uh, here is the representative uh, diagram of a few pigs which have uh, isolated after the discovery uh, 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 study. And that after that, we have identified few uh, proteins which are basically uh, differently expressed in the COVID positive and COVID negative. So here you can see that there is a two, uh, first upper three samples are basically a COVID positive and the lower three samples are the COVID negative samples. So these peptides are basically up regulated in the positive samples and down regulated in the negative samples. So similarly, these are these are, these are the different peptides and proteins of a. So as you can see, there is a different uh, peptide we got from the study. And also in the slide, you can see uh, we have also published a few paper on the basically the uh, COVID plasma swab sample, plasma sample as well as sample so uh, yeah so this is Thank a very uh, good instrument to detect a very small amount of peptides and uh, uh, also the mole small molecule as well great all right so uh, this instrument and uh, some of the other mass spectrometers we are going to cover in a dedicated session to all the participants this is one of the cutting edge technology not only for covid 19 but for cancer research or drug discovery process is very important uh, to move forward in this area uh, Another technology which is uh, quite a bit uh, being used is the uh, microarrays. From the genomic based microarrays to the protein based arrays, it has a lot of utility. And especially in COVID-19 context, it was uh, important to look at immunogenic responses. And in many kind of cancer, you know, one was looking at early detection of the biomarkers. So again, protein microarrays become important. So Abhilash is going to now walk you through with this microarray based workflow. So uh, while the teas are getting ready, uh, here what you are seeing is, you know, protein arrays, which is having a small on the glass slide, you have thousands of proteins printed. And the principle is very simple, like a Western blot, when you have low, we are looking at antigen antibody interaction, right? So here in the same way, like, you know, the antigens are printed on the chip. And what we are showing that if a patient sample comes in, which let's say a serum or plasma sample, whether that is having antibody in response to disease, and that antibody is going to bind to the antigen on the chip. After subsequent washing is step, then you are going to label with a fluorophore, which could be used to detect that signal. So now I think you can see on the screen here, which is uh, uh, one of the microarray slide here, which is uh, uh, being shown, uh, where you can see these are the you know, very high density arrays and the chips where you have uh, thousands of protein printed in case of uh, Human protein arrays, we had almost uh, 19,000 human protein in duplicate printed. 
and in case of the SARS CoV 2, we had all the uh, uh, peptides uh, of the uh, various proteins of virus were all printed. So, again, it's very high density uh, format to look at the entire proteome at a single uh, 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 you know, snapshot at the immunogenic response using different type of uh, code that you can use to detect the signal. So, thank you, uh, Arko and uh, Abhilash. And let me now move on to the next technology, which is the uh, looking at biomolecular interactions. And that's where you can uh, think about uh, how to use the protein-protein uh, -protein interaction or protein-drug interactions. And now Shalini will walk you through the BLI, bilateral interferometry based principle. Thank you, Abhilash. Uh, so, Shall we please continue? Hello? Show the LI instrument and talk. So, uh, this is the BLI system where you can see there are these two things. Uh, one is the tray which is containing the sensor, and the other tray is there which is containing the sample. Uh, this is the samples, and these are the sensors. So here, if you see, in the sensors, we know that these bio, uh, bio, bio layers uh, inter interferometry is actually having first step, which is containing all the different types of uh, chemistry, which is involved in uh, understanding the kinetics or protein-protein interaction or different molecular interaction. So what we do usually, these two are the places. One is for the sensor, where we place this kit, and this is exactly 96 well plate replication, which is done here on the black plate of 96 well. So here all the samples will be kept and all the buffers will be placed. And this much this uh, template which you can see here are the eight sections which pick up the eight sensors from this plate and this these this these in different sets, which can be buffered in loading and different things, which I'll explain you on the top. So once this is done. We can close this and the whole thing happens in this particular part. Now, we, if we see here on the screen, then we can see here this, this is the plate how it looks. And we can define for the plate where the samples are there. So these are for the buffers, loading, and then buffers. So basically, the idea is that first of all, we want them to, uh, so, so if we can go to the slide, it will be easier. Yeah, Shalini, I think we have to stop here. So uh, thanks for showing the instrument and setup. Uh, it gives them idea that we are looking at uh, antigen antibody reaction in much more high throughput manner. And that's where different type of principles are involved. Sometime uh, looking at bilayer interferometry principle or sometime looking at the surface plasma resonance based principle. Just to summarize today's session, we have tried to give you glimpses. Of course, it, it is not a lectured session. We directly, uh, with good coordination from all the TLs, which, uh, which I should thank all of them uh, for showing the things in a very short time, uh, we were able to give you some glimpses at how these technologies at the time of pandemic were able to help us to uh, you know, understand this virus and the host response much better. And these technologies can be very powerful for various type of biological question which you would like to address in your journey towards your future of your research, right? So we got uh, several uh, you know, these type of patents and products out from this uh, uh, research. And in the course which you are going to study in bioengineering and in the interactomics, you will be exposed for these technologies at much more length with the principal as well as hands-on session. Please do make uh, this as an opportunity to interact with us much more so that we are there to help you, guide you through the processes. And of course, we are going to be having more of these kind of laboratory-based live sessions every month. And the next live session will be uh, in the February uh, I did not see any technical queries on the forum from the student, but I definitely encourage you to talk to us more. Uh, some other questions which were on the forum, essentially that in which way this, uh, you know, the technique which you're going to study in bioengineering can be helpful to you, uh, especially for some students from the engineering background. Uh, main thing is, main idea is to expose you to a lot of uh, concept and technologies at the early stage of your career. So that when you are trying to choose your and build your career, you might find that, okay, biomedical engineering or interface of engineering to some domain of biology could lead you to some novel ideas and new concepts and maybe a new type of career journey, right? So that's a bioengineering course could be very powerful. Interactomics course is a much more specialized course to give you much more connection with the industries and applications. 
if you are to graduate and you want a job in the pharmaceutical sector, if you can uh, spell out mass spectrometers and you can spell out uh, SPR and BLI very well with the principle and with at least basic data analysis workflow, you will be highly employable because a lot of industries and pharma sectors are looking at people having skills in these area, right? So with this, I think, you know, all of you should be really, uh, you know, motivated to work with us, given that there are thousands of students who are taking these courses. Uh, there is a huge number, but it still will be as much as possible to make it uh, give you the like classroom experience as much possible. Uh, please do uh, uh, connect with us again next month for the laboratory based live session. But additionally, you will have every week two live sessions on Friday and Saturday. With this, let me close and let me thank all the TAs for very well coordinating the entire session to give you the glimpses of how omics technologies and recent innovations in multi omics has been so powerful and could be utilized for different type of biological questions to be addressed. Of course, today we are only focusing on the COVID-19, given that it has been, you know, the everybody is very much fed up with the COVID-19 and uh, you'd like to see what, you know, biology can, can deliver in, in this particular area. So we have focused on this concept. Nevertheless, these technologies are equally applicable, whether you work on plants or fungus or any kind of medical problem, these are going to be equally powerful to all of you. So uh, we are almost now over the time and we would like to stop the session. So good luck everyone for continuing these uh, MOOC uh, courses. And uh, we are very much optimistic that you are going to uh, make the best use of these opportunities and courses to build your career further and uh, take more knowledge from these courses. Thank you very much. And we'll connect again with you in the next live session in February. Good luck and good evening. Bye.